what is going on, everybody? It's been a while, huh? Been a, Ooh, been a long time. Long Welcome. time. Been a Welcome. Welcome. Appreciate you having me back on. Yeah, Pop, it's good to get you back on, man. Don't be such a stranger. Where in the hell have you been? Man, I've been hiding out, man. I've been doing things here and there. I slowed down a little bit, but I'm still throwing some stuff out there every once You're in a while. You're still still buying stuff left and right, right? Oh, uh, not as bad as I used to be. I'm not a completionist anymore, for the most part. Now, um, I still got all the Vestrons and shit like that. But as far as, um, just to give you a little update on my screen factory habits, you know, I had everything. I was getting everything that came out. And they started putting out all this, just everything was just bullshit left and right. What is this shit? <laughs> Paying 30 bucks for it. I said, you know, I'm done. And so I went through all my standard releases and I started going through shit I'm never going to watch. And I, I was just telling uh, Garrett before we started, I sold a lot of my standalones, a lot of my standard editions um, last Thanksgiving. I have all the collectors. I have, you know, all that stuff still, all the shout selects. But um, the standard editions, I got about 50% of what I had. Well, most of this year's standard editions. So, uh... yeah. And I still have a bunch of them for, for this time frame. I kept all the IFC midnights. Don't ask me why. I Dude, like, of- this is just so biz- This is a bizarre year, and we're going to get yeah. to these 90 plus releases from uh, the fall of 2018 to the fall of 2019. Is what we're going through today, and for everybody that <laughs> we're going to go through the- 90 releases, don't you say? <laughs> yes, over <laughs> it's 90. My ass. I got work tomorrow. <laughs> You know, I think that a lot of us don't have some of these because I, I actually was very shocked on how many of these I don't have now. So I've really dialed it back at this point um, as well. So they started getting the hammer here, and stuff. So I didn't get any of that stuff. I, I kind of wish I did looking back, but I, I didn't No. This, I, I kind of remember this year a little bit, though, because I was out of the physical media thing for for most of this year. Bought a couple of these releases when they came out, but... Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff they were releasing was, you know, the the Hammer stuff and a lot of the older Universal Monster or, well, Universal Horror stuff. Just not familiar with that. I didn't grow up with that sort of thing, so I didn't purchase it. But we're going to go through and we're going to try our best uh, to get to all these releases on here and briefly at least talk about them. Were you buying stuff at this time? Because this was 2018 when this was good, and I was completely out of all this. Like I wasn't buying anything around this time. Uh, I don't think. Were you still like oh, knee yeah. deep in it? I was knee deep in it. Yeah, I think I slowed down a lot though. I don't remember why, but I knew. <clears throat> like I said, I'm not. I'm not familiar with a lot of Hammer stuff. It's not that I don't like it. I just never was into it. Like in the sense that I didn't. I never watched a lot of it. So therefore, I know they were doing a lot of titles, and I was like, eh, I guess I can skip this line because I don't know much about it. And um. Again, looking back on it, I kind of wish I got into it because I am more curious about that side of the horror genre that I don't really know that well. But I did get a lot of stuff here, but um, there were a lot that I was surprised I didn't have. And I'm trying to think some I may have sold as well. Um, But yeah, I do have quite a bit, but there were a lot on this list. I was like, I don't even remember this coming out. Yeah. And I didn't start getting into the boutique stuff until around 2020, late 2020. And um, so I was still, you know, a collector buying movies, but I didn't get in the boutique side of it. So I started going crazy with Screen Factory about 2020, 2021. So this year I'm still going back and buying old stuff, having to track some stuff down with slips, stuff like that. Um, right. So, yeah. That's a sharp shirt you got on there, by the way. I wanted to yes, it's sure not. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> got to represent, man. Appreciate the only it. thing that I really went back and bought, I mean, I've got a lot of the collector's editions from this year. I was noticing that. The ones that are the bigger name ones anyway uh as the uh steel books i went back and got a lot of these steel books like this was only like last year for some reason i decided i was going to try to buy a bunch of fucking screen factory steel books i still don't really understand why but i did uh but that's really all i went back and got like um i didn't i didn't buy a lot of these i just was looking at that i didn't get a lot of these titles from this you didn't want to buy the mole people unfortunately not or wasp (laughs) wasp or woman i didn't get that neither I had the mole people. It's now sitting at Orbit DVD if you want to buy it. He bought it for me cheap, and he's selling it. I'm expensive. sure it's the same copy, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to get into these here shortly, and the chat is burning up. I don't know how much time we'll have to get to the chat because we're talking about like 95 releases tonight, but kind of maybe go through and do a little bit of a roll call here. And uh, Caveman Movies and More says, Hey there, everyone. Please hit the like button uh, for the incredible guests. Mr. Pop, Pop the Movie Dungeon. And I hope everyone had a great Easter. Vanderhoff66FU. 
Saturn Video, Prince Tomato, uh, Adrian James. We got Born to Be Rad in the chat as well. Max Thunderdome. Uh, <laughs> he's got a quick question. I, I think this is kind of common. Um, who here has opened up a brand new Screen Factory release and saw that the disc is already scratched? My biggest complaint with Screen Factory is the shit ass quality control. I don't think I had anything scratched, but their quality control is pretty shitty. Yeah, I got a lot with loose discs, whatever, but nothing that I've noticed being scratched from the get go. I, I had some uh, some goop on some of mine. <laughs> Y'all remember so that? The off gassing, off gassing fiasco. I did have that. Yeah. Well, what, what did they say? Like, Yo, just get a get a, get a cloth and wipe it off. Yeah, they're like, this is a normal. normal That's just a normal occurrence. That's called off. You notice that doesn't you know. happen anymore either. By the way, like, you never hear <laughs> no about that. Anymore. Is. Do you have like um, a rag? You just take that and wipe. Yeah, it off. just a I microfiber you know, I hope cloth. They did say that to somebody. Yeah. Go to the Dollar Tree and buy a microfiber cloth. I think they did good. say that. Go get a microfiber cloth yep. and wipe it off. Right. I think that's exactly right. what their response was. Hey, yep. hey, dummy, go buy your towel. <laughs> it's off gas. It's stupid. <laughs> That would have been so killer if all of a sudden, like, the next year they did, like, you bought, like, $50 more and they gave you, like, a free Screen Factory microfiber towel, like, as, like, a gift. Right. You can buy, like, a right. 10 pack on their website. <laughs> God, that Ed, was a time that... period, wasn't it? <laughs> Edward Duff, Wild Wrangler, Holland Oats, Astro Juicy. That's a name I'm not familiar with. Welcome, sir. Uh, Justin Smith, Falls Rotten, Magic Hands, Witch Hunter, Fight the Good Fight. Kristen, Christian Lazo, Raised on Fiction, Ken Carlson, Antonis Andriotis, KB is in the house from KB Loves Movies. What's up, man? Uh, Ace Arcadia, who is a new member, one of these channels on here. Welcome, sir. Appreciate up, it. Um, Don Morton, Jackie 2023. Welcome, Jackie. That Horror Critic. Slipcover Steve, Heavy Metal Turtles, Chris C. the Slasher Dude, What's The R Ring, Alpha Romero. Um, lots of people on here, boys. Saturn Video, The Chevy Chase is in the house, Mools, Suspiria Knight, uh, Gabe Tricks Films, Wilkie's Movies and Music, Phantasmat, uh, Peter Schweller. Metal Man is in here. Oh, baby. There he is. <laughs> what up, dude? Yeah, he finally. Where the hell, where's he been? <laughs> he's been out on the West Coast excursion for the last couple of years. Oh, wow. I don't know. Is he, is he out there finding himself or something? Like, what's going on? Yes. He's become a Mormon. Oh, no, that's I'm Utah, not... isn't it? Yeah, that's Utah. That's Salt Lake. He's in um, California. In California, I don't know what you do out there, really. A exorbitant amount of prices and taxes and maybe he's in a commune or something uh, who knows but we are doing a multi-stream tonight we've already got right at 150 people on here so um don't forget to thumbs up the video on both channels born to be rad and dead pit and subscribe and go over and subscribe to pop as well pop's sure. movie dungeon so we're gonna go ahead and get rolling here guys because this is this is gonna be a show boys it's gonna be a show um Starting off October the 16th, 2018 releases. And much like what Screen Factory is doing now with the 4Ks, they were doing with the steel books then. The first batch of re-releasing 4K remasters on Steelbook of Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Where's Halloween 3 Season of the Witch? Still sealed. Didn't need to open it. <laughs> That's a collectible right there. Right? Now, at one point in time, both of those were out of print and going for big money, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Garrett? I think you remember that. I remember it because I sold them. Yeah. So I uh, <laughs> yeah. I was going after all the steel books, and then I go, what the hell am I doing? I already have all these movies. I'm just rebuying them on a different, like, just a different case, basically. So I just said, you know what? I, and I sold everything off. And uh, those ones are the two, I think, highest price ones. I think even They Live went for a pretty penny. So, um, yeah, I have zero Screen Factory Steelbooks now. They're all, they've all been sold. Yeah. I didn't buy any of the Steelbooks for the longest time. And I, I, I think I ended up getting one, maybe two. And I said, you know what? Let me go back and start looking for them. 
I got all of them, but about eight now. I'm still missing about eight of them. You know, the only, and this is crazy because I was like, this couldn't be right, but I went back and double checked. The only Screen Factory steel book that I own at all and have ever owned is this new creep show 4k still book. This guy's been promoting this thing for like, <laughs> it's like his Man. favorite release of the year. Dude. Uh, I think it's my favorite screen factory release in a long time. Actually. Wow. I said, I wasn't going to buy it. I was at Walmart and they had three there. I said, you know what? What the hell? I'm going to go and get it. So I got it. I mean, I don't have the standard 4k or anything. I'm, I'm a gigantic one. mark for creep show. But... Garrett's holding out on it. I, I... <laughs> I already I have the 4K. I just bought the 4K. I'm He's like, gonna why am I going to buy it? I guarantee you buy it. Oh, I have a rule. No Screen Factory Steelbooks. That's a, oh, that's a rule. Shit. That's a oh, collection okay. rule. Well, that is a rule, I guess. But, dude, yeah. look at this one. Though. This one's not. It, is it, though? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> yeah. that really. Listen, it's not really that he, cool of an, of an image, though, really. He what didn't is like it, like, Apple, and he didn't like no. the maximum overdrive one, Gary. Yeah, I don't want the fuck. Garrett don't like comic He don't like comic book looking stuff. Like a random blue spider web background like the guy flopped in the middle. but but speaking of creep show though this brings us to october 23rd uh 2018 a gigantic release for them everybody was hot for this collector's edition of george a romero stephen king's creep show from uh 1982 this is an image bro look at this it's a thick yeah. box look at the i still have here. it this is one of my, my favorite that releases that ever did my, yeah i was gonna say that might be my it's favorite got this release. cool image in here a nice one yeah. right there. I don't know why they didn't do more of this box though. Cost too much. That's kind of compete with arrow and stuff like that, man. I mean, that would have been the way to go, man. It really yeah. would have. This is a really nice. It was too expensive for them, and they're cheap bastards. I think that's. Probably we got the damn Elvira one. <laughs> you know? No reason at all. Yeah, yeah that was bizarre. Random. <laughs> I have no explanation for that at all. I like how sad the video in here's got like a new term I never heard this before. Minimalist steel books suck. <laughs> Like, so you mean there's like minimalist steel books? Yeah. There's like high end steel books. Now? I think okay. like the uh, I think maybe that image is considered mim minimalist. But then like if you look at the Army of Darkness one and stuff, it's like a lot going on. Oh, so I think that's probably yeah, yeah. I think that's probably like a premiere. Like steel. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't have time for these categories. <laughs> I think that that's one of the best steel books that Scream Factory's ever done. I mean, as far as the artwork goes, because to me in person that shit's uh, that, that's stunning. I think yeah. I think it's a lot better than the some of the other ones they've done like for me i'm not a fan of whoever the artist is they use for those steel books i don't think it's who is it it's different people i think yeah, yeah i don't know who's doing the new ones there's a bunch of different ones i just don't like it but uh continuing on also on october the 23rd night of the demons the 4k remaster on the limited edition steel book now this is one that we may be missing you don't have that one what is this oh, one now? Night of the Demons. I look, man, look, I thought for sure I had this because it was right around the time when I got like the Angela figure. Then you have it because that was the only way to get it. I That's why I had it because you could only get it with that. Then I, I've got it, but I couldn't tell you where it is. I, well, you need I, to organize your stuff right. a little bit better, Uncle Bill. You can't find a guinea pig DVD. <laughs> Say it now. You can't that find it. 20 years old. You did I, shit. Like, innocence I'm, is no excuse. Is my favorite. I've had that in storage for like. Yeah, let me whip that out. I do wish I could find that, though, because I'd immediately sell it. I thought you was going to give it to me. No, I was just kidding about that. I ain't gonna get, I, that thing's probably worth about $400. Uh, it's a couple hundred dollars set, actually. Uh, and by the way, we did find out that'll never be back in print either. Not at least. Well, according to the unearthed, unearthed, unearthed what, films. Any big set? Yeah. 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 Continuing on, though, boys. October 23rd also. Another IFC midnight joint. I think Pop still has all of them, right? The Devil's yeah. Doorway, baby. Any memories what of uh, that movie? Me? I have not watched this yet. Um, I've had it for like two years. I can't even tell what, what is on it. Who's it, looks like, it looks like a damn cigarette burn or some shit. But it's oh, just a I white mark over her face. Like I haven't seen the movie yet, so I, don't, I have no idea. There's a shot of the inside of the artwork. That helps at all. But it's terrifying right there. It looks like my neighbor. <laughs> so, yeah. I've not got around to this one yet. But there it is. I still want it. Devil's Doorway. The IFC. Yeah, that's a 2018 IFC midnight release. Um, October 30th. And they're doing a lot of Corman stuff. A lot. 
this year in particular, a lot of Corman stuff, a lot of old universal stuff, hammer stuff that I really don't know much about. The wasp woman was from 1959, yeah. uh, released on the 30th, uh, October 30th, Roger Corman movie. It's barely over an hour long. I think that must've been one of those drive in double feature top deals. Um, any memories of the Wasp Woman? I think that wasn't that yeah. a public domain movie as well. Oh, I watched it and, and it went in my soul pile immediately. It was one of the worst pieces of shit I ever seen. <laughs> it was, I it think was, Basement Blues on my, owns my copy now. So sixty three minutes, but it felt like you know six hours. Yeah, I, I never I, get I into watched. those movies that he did like that. Yeah, I saw it all by uh, old fifties creature feature stuff like that. Got rid of all of them. I watched about ten or twelve that I had. It's not my thing. No, well, that's that's most of this year, no. probably too. So, um, any fans of the Wasp Woman? Let us know in the chats. I've not heard too many people brag. You're not going to get nobody say they're a fan of the Wasp Woman. I can't. Um, imagine. That's pretty bad. I bet. I bet there's one out there. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, that's underrated masterpiece. What he'll say. So the first well, thing I thought of, though, also on October 30th, Our House. It's a another IFC Midnight movie from 2018. I was immediately thinking of the Deidre Hall, Wilford Brimley TV show. Wasn't it called Our House from the 80s? Has that ever come out on anything? I have no idea. No, you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. I just remember that song. I was just going to say from the madness. House. Our no. house in the middle of the sea. No Deidre no. Hall love, Bulls? I don't know. No. The hell? Sorry. Um, yeah, well, I haven't seen this one either. Yeah, it's got Thomas Mann and Nicola Peltz in it, though, so it's bound to be killer. Well, yeah. <laughs> so no, Ken, Ken's a big wasp there. woman guy. <laughs> Chad Allen was in our house as well. Yeah, show some love. I know Garrett loves Chad Allen. Oh, yeah. That's one dude that got lost to time, but they need to bring back Chad Allen. Wasn't he in one of those, like, one-off like rip off slasher movies from back in like the late nineties or which was one it, was uh, it? Somebody in the chat will know. Was it, do you want to know a secret? It may have been, do you want to know a secret? I don't know. Or I'm fatal what, stab. Yeah. Terrorvision he was in, remember? Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like a, this was like a post scream slasher movie that he was in when he was like an adult. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's some sort of generic. Somebody can look it deal. up. But yeah, somebody needs to release our house to the Deidre Hall show back in the day. She left Days of Our Lives for a couple of years to make that show. Uncle Bill, it's a big thing. <laughs> but if you shut the fuck about Days of Our Lives, I'm like, talk about that. Show. Well, I looked. I just looked it up. He was in. Do you want to know a secret? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. it. Okay. <laughs> you want to know a secret? <laughs> a secret? Chad Allen's in that. It's one of the worst names is, for a movie. But Joey great. Lawrence is also in that too. Yeah, I think. <laughs> that's so great november the 6th a couple big releases that day sleepwalkers which Ooh. is one of uncle bill's favorite mick oh, yeah. harris I like, uh, I like a little sleepwalker yeah. actually. Joint. this is, this is great work on work great little oh, slip yeah. cover that is a killer, killer i don't know i don't own that there. that movie I have a real love hate relationship. I don't own that movie at all. I think I you, do have that actually somewhere back. I think there. you just have a love hate relationship with McGarris. I think that's really what it is. That's really true, honestly. <laughs> like that's, the, that's the it, problem. He's either really good or like just the, the shits. When was he the Bro. best? The stand. Sorry. What else? Uh, Texas Chainsaw. The last Critters. One. Critters Two was pretty good. Um, then after that, don't hate long. on Sleepwalker, says Stuntman Mark. <laughs> Yeah, Stuntman's always going to take out for that movie, but I'm just Brian saying. Brian Krause Mania is running wild in his chat tonight. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, how many police officers do you know have a pet cat that they drive around with? <laughs> What's, but I'm, I'm, waiting for you to, I'm waiting for you to talk about Texas Chainsaw, the one that came out last year. What was. Uh, uh, he will. He'll get to What it, year was Sleepwalkers? Like 92, 93, something like that? I can't remember. That sounds about right. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know if that was, was that a successful sailor for them though? I think that was around for a long time. I think the problem was, is that this had already had a Blu-ray. So it wasn't like it's first time ever hitting Blu-ray mm. because I had, I had one before I got this. Well, it was 92. Uh, it came out in 92. 92. Okay. So I don't know if that's why maybe it didn't fly off the shelves. Cause it, we, people might've already had it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, I wish I could remember her name, but you're right. The mom from Sleepwalkers was to me that was the best part of that movie, but I cannot remember her name. Um, she's pretty badass. She brutal as well. She was brutal too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Thing limited edition still book that was a huge like that one fetched a ton of money at one time as well. Right, I had, I had to get that too. Yeah, yeah. I love the art. That artwork I don't on that why. one is really good. But I really do. great artwork on this one. Now, did that they had a standard thing before, right? Did did any of these steel books not have a previous like standard release? Before? I think what I've heard is when they did the steel books, that was the four K scan. It was supposed to be a better scan than the way I understand it. Um mm-hmm. y'all correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but I understand these no, were you're right. the first four K scans on this. That was kind of the selling point. But right. yeah, you're right. You're right on that. That was the that was the four K. It was almost like a better edition and then I guess that the 4K is is better, but I don't I don't know. That's that's one of my favorite artworks on the still books. I really like that one. Now, but. I'm curious because they're doing the 4Ks, the actual 4K discs now, and they've been doing them for the last couple of years, pretty hardcore re-releasing them. Are we going to see updated 4K still books of the 8K scans on 4K? One hmm. thing's for sure. <laughs> what surprised me? <laughs> that would be so killer. I'd die laughing if they started doing that. <laughs> and that's probably all they not. could do at this point. Yeah. I hope not. You can up convert an 8K. Lord. Um on uh, November the 13th, Naked Vengeance and Vendetta. It's a women revenge double feature from the eighties. Listen oh, up. God. I'm gonna tell you right now. Oh. Maybe it's because I'm into these type of films or something. But like Naked Vengeance is, I love Naked Vengeance. It's great. Vendetta, not so much. But it does have the mom from It's Always Sunny, uh, who's like the lead villain in it, which is kind of funny to watch. Mm-hmm. But I mean, overall, like I think uh, Naked Vengeance is kind of a pretty good rip off of I Spit on Your Grave. Oh no, it's the Vader bot. Big Van Vader bot is in the house. Welcome. <laughs> um. Another interesting release that day, single white female, and it's kind of like this was a big hit back in the day. Yeah, so this, this is a big kind of, for my thing. Kind of confusing yeah. that this was a standard release. They didn't do it yeah. a collector's edition, which I always liked that movie. I thought I, I love that movie. Bridget Fonda was fucking unreal hot in this movie. Now it's a shame what's happened to her, but the hands of time, it they they don't stay still for anybody. So God bless her. You got but some did, pictures on there in the white box. You got interviews and you know on a commentary on there. Um, theatrical trailer, not a not a ton, but you you get some features on there. It's Jennifer good. Jason Lee was insanely talented. She still is actually. I she's agree. a disaster. Yeah, yeah and she's so. great in that, and she's great in Hateful Eight, and she's just about anything you watch her, and she's great. Yeah, she's great in Hateful Eight. I'm actually watching that right now. I mean, the wife yeah. was watching that before we started. I'm guessing there's oh, no extras hardly on that, right? I mean, they that that should have been a collector's edition. He said there was a little like. bit of extras, yeah. Yeah, there was on um, commentaries, some interviews with um, like the director and stuff like that, and um, theatrical trailer, not much. So, okay, interview with screenwriter stuff like that, right? November the twentieth. Um, now. This is another thing that kind of sticks out from this year too, and this is the first one that's that pops up. That's was like a ten dollar Walmart title forever. It's like they made too many of these, and there were a few from this year. But this is the collector's edition of Candyman uh, with uh, Tony Todd, of course, the original Candyman, right? And they did they kind of went all out with this edition. They had a couple of different slip covers, lithograph posters, all Two that cuts. stuff. Yeah, different cuts of the movie, lots of extras and everything. <laughs> Did they make too many of these? Because, like I said, they were all over Walmart for like ten dollars with the slip and everything. Like, very unusual. Mm. I think they must have, because you can still like up until like a little while ago, they were selling them like on Hamilton Books and shit, mm-hmm. like super cheap. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but they probably made way too many of them. Great movie. Great soundtrack. Nobody references that no. soundtrack that much anymore, but the soundtrack in that movie is insanely good. Right. And I mean, it's one of the rare, like this is another one from like 91, 92 from that time frame that 
people would definitely consider a classic. There's not too many horror movies from that early 90s period that people still reference today. It's definitely one of them. And this was one that I had pre-ordered. I actually, uh, I remember it was kind of rare. There's only a couple here that I can recall actually ordering from Scheme Factory themselves. Uh, so this was a huge release, I think, November the 20th. Also, that same day, the uh, Jamie Blanks Joint Urban Legends Collector's Edition, which this one also had a previous Blu-ray release. But, you know, they're going all out here. Two-disc edition loaded up with special features. I've always been a fan of this movie. I like it quite a bit. I, I like this, too. Yeah. It's my favorite post-screen movie like that. And yeah, back in the day, they did the reversible slips like on everything. And all your 4Ks you're getting now, no reversible slips. Mm. That's just fucking laziness, in my opinion. Solid edition. I think the you know the slip sold out pretty quick on it, going for money. Now that I can, I can almost guarantee you that's going to be a 4K upgrade at some point that uh, we'll be seeing. But the same day, and did you guys pick this one up too? This one's not as beloved. It was kind of like a, a quick cash in sequel. Urban Legends Final Cut got the standard edition. Legends never die. Classic, man. Classic piece of shit. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't get that one. Garrett, what are your thoughts about that movie, though? Have you seen it? Is I always get confused. Um, well, there's Urban the Legends Bloody one. Mary. And then is that part other... two or is Final Cut part? I, I don't even know. Final that. Cut's the second one. It came out in like the late 90s, I think, or early 2000s. See, I bought the 88 films collection that has like all three of them in the mm -hmm. box set and sat down and watched them one day. But like once I got past the first, like the other two are just completely. Which bullshit. one is Danielle kinda, Harris? Is she in the, it, she's, she's in the first she's in the, one. Oh, she's, yeah. she's, the first she's one. the goth chick in the first. Yeah. One. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, the other two are pretty, pretty bad. I have them both on DVD, but I get them both very confused. They're not, it's, it's not very good. Uh, the girl that I think the girl at what well, what was she in? Uh Stir of Echoes, I think is the star of it. The she's like the the ghost in Stir of Echoes mm -hmm. or whatever. <laughs> I don't remember the ghost in Stir of Echoes. The I'm fucking girl. The, I mean, I know who you're talking about. I just yeah. can't I can't place yeah. her for some reason. Uh, that's the only other thing I can recall she was in, but the the next uh, Scream Factory was on a freaking roll. They was releasing shit every week up to this point. So the very next week, <laughs> November the 27th, they had the Munchie double feature. Munchies <laughs> and Munchie. Munchies yeah. was one of my favorite movies as a kid. So like, well, I bought that pretty much immediately. Just hasn't aged that well, though. And then Munchie. In 2020, 2021, when I bought this, it was still in print. I want to say I bought this from Scream Factory. So I don't think this is a big hot seller. For I think I've got no, that it's too. still it's still on their site. I think. Yeah, yeah it... Munchi. I can't explain what Munchi exactly is. It's the little thing that's on the cover there. Uh, <laughs> There's yeah, a damn man. Munchie right there for you. <laughs> that thing's <laughs> a killer. It's like me when I wake up in the morning. Oh no shit! <laughs> and they had another Munch. I think it was like Munchie Strikes Back or something like that. Yeah, there was a second Munchie like. It's but just, it wasn't Munchies, it was just Munchie. It was him, but a sequel. So it's weird that they put Munchies and Munchie together because there is a Munchie sequel. Yeah, they should have had all three of them pieces yeah, of shit they, on there. So, yeah, I was looking just to make sure, but Munchie was directed by Jim Wynorski. Anything directed by Jim Wynorski is going to be like B-movie, really low budget, just cheesy as anything. Well, Munchies is kind of like a Gremlins ripoff, pretty much, yeah. right? Munchie just has that one little weirdo. Yeah. Yeah. And they used to play this stuff on TV a lot. I think that's where I saw Munchie. I don't know if it was eight on HBO or USA Network or something like that. I need to go back and revisit that because I just remember, even as a kid, that thing being goofy as hell. It is. It's it's real bad, man. But yeah, that Andrew Stevens is in that one. I think both of those are Corman productions as well um also november 27th the critters collection which this was huge as well i think this was you, the other one that i had pre-ordered when it came out this is another one that i feel like must have been like overprinted because these were at walmart, walmart. Yeah, you get them like walmart. dirt cheap there yep. too 
I got this in the Omen at the same time and the fly off yeah. of Walmart. Yeah. I love those movies though, but I mean, I just yeah. don't think, I think they printed too many of them. I think what surprised me though, at the time when they announced it, that was pretty fairly priced on Screen Factory site. Uh, yeah, great artwork to a lot on those two, man. Those classic, classic artwork. I've pulled it once on there. And if I'm not mistaken, none of the Critters movies were out up to this point either on Blu-ray. There's an argument to be made that Critters 2 might be Mick Garris's best film. Garrett Dispute. <laughs> I think it's great. I like all these movies, actually. Um, I thought there was a funny quote on one of them, but I can't find it. The first Critters movie was a gigantic financial success, though. It made like a ton of money if you go back and look. Like, it did really well. Even Raphael went to go see it. Actually, Critters 2 is an Easter movie, too, now that I sit here and think about yep. it. That's right. Should have watched that today. All right. So moving on. Very next week, December the fourth. What keeps you alive from IFC Midnight? Ooh, <laughs> how good was that one, Pop? Uh, this actually is not terrible. Um, I'm not going to pimp it or anything. It wasn't like the best thing ever, but it's watchable. I'm going to say that much. Not the best review in the world, but like, it's it's definitely watchable. Um. It's, it's, it's middle of the, the I've seen midnight that I've seen is middle of the road. I've seen better, seen worse. I wonder how many of these you can get on uh, the Hamilton a, book for like $4.99 right now. If you're into the female on female thing, this is your movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> UB's like ordering it right now. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> He's ordering that and bound on four. If you're in, like who I ain't. Like, oh, that shit. Oh, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of big old titties on either. <laughs> it gets pretty brutal in parts, but it's not a bad movie. Not bad. The uh, same day, pop Lord have mercy. If you've got Elizabeth Harvest, <laughs> he does. <laughs> I got Say, what the hell is that? like that. Who is Elizabeth Harvest? I haven't seen this one yet, so I can't say nothing about this one. Elizabeth what, Harvest. What is it? Like, I mean, what is the... Elizabeth? Elizabeth Harvest. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> He just keeps saying it. <laughs> well, it's Nothing is as it seems with his brain bending plunge into our darkest desires. And it's got Elizabeth from Abbey Lee, the Neon Demon. A beautiful well, young yeah. woman arrives at the palatial estate of her brilliant scientist husband, Henry. <laughs> I, I so Elizabeth, will you watch <laughs> Elizabeth Tarvis with me? Yeah. You love Elizabeth. I hate your guts. <laughs> I'm assuming he maybe. I don't know, maybe he takes off body parts and harvest. I don't know. I've never seen it. It's not high on my list to watch. Probably never yeah. will watch it either, just to be honest. Um, I'll get around to it eventually. Maybe. December the 11th, the very next week. Scream Factory's coming for all your money in the fall of 2018. I actually pre ordered this too because it came with the damn figure. And I was like, there's no way I'm not getting this figure. And we're talking about Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Would you ever thought that would be an Eric Freeman figure? <laughs> ever? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it shows how wacky and wild and it's, started to get. Honestly, it's a really, really crappy looking figure, though. <laughs> I ended up. It's not great. I'll be honest. I ended up selling it because I was like, what am I going to do with this damn thing? So oh, there you do. That's a garbage day. Yeah, I was chasing these down after the facts. So I never got the figures. Not that I probably would have got them anyway. I did get the big titty. Um, uh, what's your name? <laughs> Barbo. Big Titty. Big titty Bobo, Bobo, Bobo. Oh, Adrian Bobo. If I get crazy money, I'm just going to sell it. <laughs> is it going to close? I, did you unbutton the blouse or whatever? I'm not quite that creepy, Garrett. Uh, close. Well. But I have not unbuttoned the blouse. Not to say that I won't, but it I have does have clothes. You can unbutton it. Yeah, you can take it off. <laughs> you know, it <laughs> you'd be saying it's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation collector's edition, the exact same day. Now, this. I never did get this because uh, this is not one of my favorite. Uh, no, it's not good at all. But I, you know, I'm... and but I like the artwork on so it. It's bad. It's just bad. They did a good job with the with the artwork on it and everything. And yeah. 
we revisited this movie not too awful long ago. I mean, there's definitely worse movies out there, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. It's interesting though. That's there was a making of documentary about this movie that for some reason, I don't think Slippy ever elaborated on it. It's online, but they never were allowed to use it on the DV or on the Blu-ray. Um, and it's pretty in-depth documentary as well. So that's kind of, kind of interesting that that wasn't on there, but, uh, no. Any thoughts about the movie, Garrett? I don't mind it. I actually don't know why I don't have it here. I must have forgot to get it, but I do have that uh, that edition. I just um, love the noises that Leatherface makes, too, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll man. still never get over that, seeing that for the first time. My buddy Keith and I were watching it, and uh, there's this one scene where uh, McConaughey's like just killed somebody, and he's chasing the other dude like down the street in the truck. And the dude runs out of breath, so he like leans over. McConaughey slides next to him. The guy looks at him and he goes, "Stop it, Mister! You're scaring me." And I remember, like, I thought it was like the funniest <laughs> line like ever because the acting was so bad. And then ever since then, that's like the one thing I remember about the movie is like how terrible those kids were. You know? What's crazy is it's like this movie was shelved until uh, McConaughey and Renee Zellweger became stars. Mm-hmm. So it. Odds are if like they hadn't, well, I'm sure eventually it probably would have come out, but like it was delayed. And for, syndrome would have released it if they'd never become stars. Yeah. yeah it, would it would have been much later, but yeah, it was like 94, I think was when it was made. And it didn't come out until like 97. Yeah. And they used like, that was one of the, what was it? The 588 bin back in the day at Walmart. That was one of the mainstays that mm-hmm. uh, original DVD and it had their name plastered all over it. Also, uh, December the 11th, The Mangler from uh, Toby Hooper and uh, Robert England. It's another one I it's thought I had that I, I yeah, didn't. It's a fun it's movie. Out. Yeah. People shit on that movie, but it's actually not that bad. No, I like it. I had spent a while since I went back and revisited that one. You got the reverse bar there. Yeah, I, like, I like that artwork there. That's actually better. better than yeah. That reminds me of the video store days. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is a fun movie. I like the Mangler. It's all right. Uh, the very next week, the 18th of December, 2018, Starman Collector's Edition, the John Carpenter, one of the, probably his more unusual movies ever. I Star really, Man. really like this movie too. Though. Me too. Man, I love Starman. There's a lot of people that don't like this movie. I'm, I love this movie. I grew up on it, man. That's that's a good one. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. The original post art there. Jeff Bridges doing that whatever that character is where I guess he's you know, he's an alien, but he's trying to learn like mannerisms and how to speak and all that. It's yeah. really, really good. Like it's really well acted. Karen, Karen Allen, Allen. Back in the day, yeah. yeah. And this was another one that was a ten dollar Walmart release. Like it was I don't like I said, they I don't know, I guess they made too many of them or something or and this came oh, out in 84. I don't know if you can see it or not, but that, that one shot there when he's turning into Jeff Bridges, the alien dude, with the light there, that's pretty cool facial expression mm-hmm. for 84. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, like I said, it, it holds up, man. It's still a good movie. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a chick flick. You watch it with your girl. Did they already do a 4K of Starman? Yeah, yeah but it's did. like that big collection, I think. Like, you had to buy, like, that big, huge box or whatever, and it was, like, one of the ones in there. Oh, it's like a studio release or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also December the 18th, Dracula. <laughs> Shut up, Garrett. Don't do it. What? <laughs> I wish I had that. It. I wish the I Prince had that. of Darkness. Yeah, this is not my wheelhouse here, but I mean, it was the collector's edition. So it's a good movie, actually. But, um, yeah, don't have it. Dracula. Yep. There's your old artwork there. Plenty of uh, hammer titles on it. And honestly, like that's, I don't know if I've ever seen that, but I mean, I need to. Hammer is one of like my week. Me too. You know, I, I've not really watched a whole lot of that stuff. So well, I watched I um, four or five in a row one weekend, and they're they look all the same to me. One one just kind of bleeds into the other, and they all start fucking Christopher Lee. Jesus Christ! How many times can it be Dracula? Or it all, they like it. They For like some it. reason, they always remind me of like watching Dark Shadows or something. Like they just all have mm-hmm. that look to them. That's mm-hmm. like the same look, and yep. I, I just can't. I can't get into it. I don't know. Yeah, and I can't shit on this. I've never seen it, so I need to watch it. Uh, we got over 200 people in the uh, wow. chat, so perfect opportunity to tell you guys to thumbs up the video, right, Uncle Bill? Thumbs up the stream. 
go like every channel and uh, subscribe and become you, members. Yeah. You can All thumbs up and like uh, Pop and Garrett's channel. I don't want you. To do that. No, <laughs> I don't want none of it. That's the way to promote it, Uncle Bill. Reverse, reverse psychology, Uncle Bill. Right. Yeah. You're you're, you're not going to subscribe. No. <laughs> you better not. You got the balls That's to hit that all. like button. Yeah. Your pansies. If you don't hit that like button, you hate America. Yo, <laughs> mama didn't raise a subscriber. That's right. <laughs> Too funny. Eight millimeter came out. Well, they they skipped Christmas and New Year's, right? So they took a two week hiatus on January the eighth, twenty nineteen. Joel Schumacher. Eight millimeter. Man, I love this freaking movie, man. Joaquin Phoenix is one of my favorite actors, and I, he's, he's great in this. He's a slimy ass. Um, that was one of his first big breakout time. roles, or something, too. Yeah. Right? This is a fun movie. Man, I ain't say fun. It's a. It's one I go back and watch quite often. You got James Gandolfini in this, man. That's a good one. I haven't seen that forever, but it yeah, was, I don't know why really I didn't pick that up. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It holds up, man. It's, it's good. That was back when uh, Nicolas Cage wasn't releasing two movies a week. Yeah. <laughs> what other artwork we got here? I guess yeah, yeah. is that the original artwork there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. That's on the DVD cover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fan, man. I like it. I need to go back and watch that again. That is one. It gets dark, man. It gets real dark. Obsession, the uh, Brian De Palma movie, was the very next week, January the fifteenth, twenty nineteen. God, I've never even seen some of these. Like, yeah, that is that still in print or do you I mean, know? The covers. I sold um, I sold it, but I don't know if a year it's... or so ago. I don't know if it still is now. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen that cover or not either. Yeah. That's interesting. It's my favorite artwork of the collection. Yeah, but it's really good. Good movie. Yeah, and that's got on the other side here. Let's just slide the slip cover from nineteen seventy six. So he did this the same year as Carrie, right? And that's the seventy six <clears> was Carrie too. <laughs> Plague of the Zombies. Some more I British horror goodness from 1966. Sold that one. Yeah, sold Probably a good one. move, there, I'd say. Also, January the 15th, Saturday the 14th, which I didn't realize. <laughs> I think I've got that over there somewhere. I didn't realize that was like from 1981. So they quickly spoofed Friday the 13th with that name, Saturday yeah. the 14th. But, yeah, I sold uh, that one also. I rewatched it. I remember watching it as a kid. It didn't hold up for me, so I, I put it in the cell pile. Got rid of it. I can't yeah. remember it because I get it confused with the uh, student bodies. Is it? The, it's the same type no, of. This movie. one's like, like there's like uh, yeah. This one I think I get it confused with. Um, there was another one around that time too. Uh, I forget, but th this is the one that I think had the fake Freddy and no fake Jake. No, it couldn't have had Freddy if it was eighty one. There's another one then that had like fake Freddy and fake Jason in it and stuff like this that. This one's really brief. It says it was an hour and 15 minutes. Hmm. So what in the hell is Saturday the 14th about then? Because I may have never seen this movie. I don't know. I didn't get the oh, Blu-ray. I have them on DVD. They were part of that like... Um, there was a sequel Cor too. Corman line. Yeah, there's that. There's another one. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of the sequel, but it had a different title. <laughs> Um, well, Transylvania twist. Was that's what I'm one. thinking. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Well, it's like a Transylvania yeah. spoof kind of, kind of thing is what it is. There's a yeah. lot of those right time, them, in my, yeah. my opinion. Uh, continuing on here, The Howling 3, also on January the 15th. That's the Marsupials. Well, it's an all-time classic. That I didn't even classic. know that that came out, dude. I'm, I, I, didn't I saw them on the list, and I was like, I had no idea they released Howling 3. No. I had no idea. Yeah, I, I love that movie. Book. I mean, it's not a good movie, but I love it. Pretty much was, all those sequels are awful, but they're great in an awful that way. That was another mainstay of uh, the Walmart 588 being back in the day. Yeah. Was, an Australian um, howling movie. Was Whoa. Saturday the 14th or Transylvania Twist? One of those, remember uh, Tall Man was in one and he threw the ball like a baseball? Or that was Transylvania Twist. Twist. I always remember oh, that scene. The, I like that one my, a lot, actually. I like yeah. that movie better. Has that ever come out on anything? Transylvania I Twist. I have the DVD. I don't know if it has a Blu-ray or anything. Didn't Anchor Bay come out with the DVD of it? No, it was um, what was the what was the company that like Sleep, Slumber Party Massacre all that was on? What was that called? That that oh uh, uh, New Concord. Or yeah, whatever. it was on. It yeah. was that. It was that label. Okay, yeah, that's one that just came out a lot on cable when I was a kid, and yeah. I always remember that one scene more than anything. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people are saying hey, it's okay. Saturday the fourteenth is not amazing. So the I think I have that, right? but I would have brought it out, but I don't know. Yeah, a company called New Concord um, released the DVD in two thousand one. Looks like I would. I'm betting that's worth that's worth some money because that New Concord stuff's pretty limited. Yeah. Like they didn't really release a whole lot of that. that stuff. Artisans and other company that their stuff's worth a lot now. If you have a lot of artisan DVDs. Let's see, where are we at here? Did I mention Plague of the Zombies? Did I mention that? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. The uh, next week then is January the 22nd. Cobra with uh, Sylvester Stallone All right. Collector's a, Edition. Hell yeah. There's a screen right. fighting one. I had a buddy of mine. He had this on my work. He made a slip cover. So I got me another slip cover for it. He's got the Screen Factor logo on the side. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. There's the back of it. But, um, that's, that's Rambo's favorite movie. I think, or at least one of his favorite movies. There's the inside artwork he did. But, um, yeah, there's the, there's the one Screen Factor put out. <clears throat> yeah, that was another one that was like $10 at Walmart, too. Like there was a few, there's a I few from this year. I don't that's think it came with a slip cover, though. But yeah, it's a fun movie. It's been a long time since I've seen that. It's kind of unusual that it's a Scream Factory release, though. Yeah, it's got a lot of horror elements to it, though. You know, it's a yeah, kinda like a slasher. Ten to Midnight Collector's Edition, nineteen eighty-three. Uh, Charles Bronson joint. Yeah, man, a, love Charles Bronson. Yeah, no, that's a fun one from what I can recall. I um, think I got the eighty-eight films version of that did they release that too i think they did i have the twilight time one okay they did which that was another one that jay lee thompson the guy that directed that he also did happy birthday to me the horror movie and i think he did a lot of other james uh or uh, charles bronson movies to the director i think he did one of the death wish movies screamers 1995 with Peter Weller and Jennifer Rubin. I wanted to like this movie so much, but I just... Yeah, didn't. it's not that great, but I'm a big Weller mark, so that's yeah. why I grabbed this thing. It, some other it's company just released that, too, and I got, I can't remember what the company was, though. Screamers! Screamers! And you you want to like be you? a screamer! February the 5th. Now, this one sounds like a classic, boys. Russian horror movie, The Mermaid, Lake of the Dead from 2018. <laughs> yeah. No, that's no. bound to be awesome. You don't have that one? <laughs> it's old. I sold it. I had it. It's yeah. old. Did you try to watch it? No, I never did watch it. Ain't I no way. Before, and I just couldn't. The, first off, the artwork was terrible. It looked like <laughs> ass. And I just never, when I was going through selling stuff, I thought I'm never going to watch this. I watched the trailer and I threw it in the bin to sell. That's one of those movies, though, man, too. Like, I almost guarantee you probably got that at uh, Hamilton Book, right? I probably did because I bought a lot of these standards from Hamilton Book pretty cheap. And that's probably one of them. Yeah. So, so at least you didn't pay a whole lot for it. The Mermaid Lake of the Dead. Who, who fucking, I mean, I'm sure it, they could have translated it to something better than the Mermaid Lake of the Dead. Who's going to ever watch that? <laughs> Another Jamie Blanks joint on February the 12th, just in time for Valentine's Day. And Garrett and the oh, Rad Pack boy. and all of them had a big... A stream about Valentine versus my bloody Valentine. It, get, it got smoked out of the water. I, I'm proud. <laughs> I'm glad it did. <laughs> we went back and revisited this movie not too long ago, man. Oh my God. Like, I mean, I guess I can understand how some people would like it and have fun with it, but it's not a good movie, in my opinion. You know, I don't. Oh, God. I'm going to regret saying this. I don't think it's horrible, but like, it's not up to par with any of those movies, those 80 slasher movies, really. Yeah. The con- it's got it. that, the concept is, is fun, but the execution. Yeah. yeah. I still got all the, um, collector's editions and shots. Alex, but the standalone releases the last year, they were killing me with the shit they were putting out. And, um, I'm dropping 30 bucks a piece on these things. So movies I'm never going to watch. And it got to the point. I, I can't collect all these. Cause at one point I had all of them. I just I couldn't do it no more. And it's the best thing I've ever done. But I see him putting that shit down. I was like, oh, I don't have to buy that now. It's fantastic. Well, dude, like seriously, the thing is, is when you started collecting this stuff, a lot of that stuff that was out of print, 
that you paid like Return of the Living Dead was one that they re-released in 4K and they're starting to do that more and more. Yeah, I mean, Let I me can understand you, it. Right uh, now you can go on like you go on Macari or something like that. They're offloading like Screen Factory releases like crazy cheap. Mm-hmm. Like, so once those things like hit 4K or like, they just, they're super, oh, thank you, Tyler Durden. I agree completely. <laughs> I'd vote for you over oh, who's, yeah. who's running. I'll just say that. <laughs> I vote for myself over this. Yeah. Um, but seriously, like you can get them like super cheap now if they've got like those 4Ks, like stuff that used to be a fortune. Yeah. Well, like you saw the thing where I got the the dead zone for like 15 bucks. That's with shipping and everything. The um yeah, I picked up the Nightbreed box set. Now I don't know how much that was going for at its peak. I know it was well over like a hundred and some dollars. Twenty six bucks, man, on that box set of Nightbreed. <laughs> I still have that bitch sealed. Stay I was. Um, I'll, I'll there you go. <laughs> Corporal Benning Field. <laughs> That's Stay a good bad. new gimmick for him, man. Corporal Benning Field. Uh, he turns heel. Oh, shit. Uh, He's tagging with Corporal Kirshner. <laughs> so, Valentine. Uh, 2001 hey i mean that fit that does fit with scream factory though i mean that's a that's a nice release lots of good extras on it the artwork is good and everything um so i have no problem with them releasing it jamie blank's a very nice australian dude yeah. Shut up! <laughs> oh, shit. he won't hear it <laughs> The Poison Ivy Collection, February the 12th, twenty. Of course I'm getting this. Yeah, do you mind? This is yeah. a classic. He's a classic. You got a total of what? Three different women. Three. Di- is it three different movies or four, four different? Four okay. movies. Alyssa Milano is in two of them, right? No, she's just in part two. It's uh, Drew Barrymore, Alyssa Milano, Jamie Priestley, Ooh. and uh, I don't know who the, who the uh, last some, one is. Some Vanilla Hua. I don't, remember. I don't remember who's on the last Maybe one. Lower number one. I never saw the fourth one then, evidently. I don't think so. Uh... The Secret Society is the name of the fourth one. <laughs> I love those. I love uh, one and two. Are re- Actually, one, two, and three are really the good. The first one is my favorite, but yeah, they're the yeah. first two are really great, I think. Who's the old man in the first one that got to make out with Drew Barrymore? <laughs> that was a really awkward. Huh? It was like, um, yeah, because. Really she was not very old yeah she was still like 18 19 maybe <laughs> and this dude was like what's his fucking name the actor it ain't tom sizemore is it it's is it tom scared tom scared tom scared tom yes. yes. yeah yes. I, yes. I had tom scared i had his face had the wrong name yeah tom i mean scared. i i envy that dude because he was probably in his 50s at that point <laughs> making out fucking drew barrymore I was back with Drew was crazy as hell. She was showing her tits on Letterman and all that. Like that was a different. Yeah. Drew and the unrated version on here, and they were, you know, there was some banging going on too. You know, do you remember so. uh, when everybody was looking for bad girls when it came out? The word got got out that you know there's a good oh, scene in yeah. that movie, and everybody was yeah. It's the so only Mr. reason to watch Mr. bad girls. Mr. Bone says Poison Ivy Four is the little girl from Little Giants that plays Icebox. Are you no. shitting me? No. <clears throat> if so, that's the most disturbing movie of all time. I'll never watch. What that. year was that though? What year was part four? Uh it was later. It was it was later. Um, um I might have to buy that. Production I'm gonna have was to, I have to look this up. Ain't no way. 2008. Yeah, it could definitely it be here then. Let me yeah, because Little Giants was what, 94, 95? Oh, no. It's uh, Shauna Waldron. Does that make sense, maybe? That's it. Yeah. That's her. Miriam McDonald. <laughs> I'm going back in. That. <laughs> oh, that is just. I had no idea on that one. That is. Uh, That's I, a good I, reason. Spot. Yeah, good reason yeah. to pre order or order it. Not pre order, but. <laughs> What the a next weird week. piece of trivia that is. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a new one. I, for some reason, I was just thinking there was three of them. But um, February the 19th of 2019, 
Return of the Vampire from 1943 with <laughs> Bella Lugosi. It didn't survive the cut. It's gone. Damn. Gone. Oh, shit. Return of the Vampire. 22619 Willard, the remake from 2003 with uh, Crispin Glover. I always kind of liked that movie. Yeah, I like this movie. I have a problem with it. Vampire. Uh, Willard. I think I saw that one time. Crispin Glover's very, very odd actor. He's like Nicolas Cage, but mm-hmm. like dialed up somehow or another. He's the perfect yeah. choice for that role. Yeah, he is a weird dude. Yeah. A lot of, he's a weird dude. But good casting for this, though. Willard. And they eventually did, or did, I don't know if it was before or after this, they did the original Willard as well with uh, yeah, it was Bruce before Davis. This. Yeah, they got that one released too. I think it was okay. before. I think. Uh, probably the release of the entire year was on February the 26th for Screen Factory from 1956, starring Hugh Beaumont from Leave It to Beaver. He was the dad. It's the Mole People, boys. He was in the Mole People as well. I wish I still had it so I could show you how shitty that art cover is. <laughs> art work is a fan, real bad. And um, the movie's horrible. I had to watch it for another stream while I was on, and man, it was so bad. As soon as I finished watching it and talking about it on the stream, it went in the bin. It was gone. That's he one of those over his shoulder. You yeah. should have cut a promo on it while you was on the street. Let me tell you something, you <laughs> asshole, for making me watch the mole people, baby. This thing is going right in the dumpster right after this and flip them off. <laughs> mole people. Damn you making me watch the mole people with you, Beaumont. Mm, it's rough. The Vengeance of She on the 26th of February. The Vengeance of She yeah. from 1968. What a Don't terrifying title, Bulls. There's yeah. nothing worse than it. The Vengeance of She. What a what a terrible name for a movie. Does that <laughs> make you want to see it at all? No. But everyone understands the wrath of the Vengeance of She. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. The Clover Hitch Killer. That's yeah, even worse. Right that, oh, that baby. Be worse. <laughs> this is the best I've seen midnight movie they got. Right the Clove here. Hitch. I'm sorry. Not Clove Hitch Killer. This is Clove a bad Hitch. ass movie. I'm going to stay behind it. Best I've seen midnight movie. Right. So if you haven't seen this yeah. shit, give it a watch. This is a killer movie. Who's in that? Say Dylan McDermott? Of course. Yeah, I believe that's what his name is. I don't, I don't remember the cast, really? but it's, um, I've seen it three times now, but I don't remember. The, wow. Um, yeah, Dylan McDermott, Charlie Plummer, and Samantha Mathis. But man, this is a freaking killer mm. movie, man. Creepy as hell. I like me some Samantha Mathis. But big fan of this one. So you're putting over the Clove Hitch Killer. Yeah, Carl Y'all need thing. to watch this, but this is a this is a solid flip. Huh. And Tom Savini. People are saying the same thing. Yeah. Uh Chris C said it was good. Yeah. Uh the Saturn Video's people. putting the mole people over, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> There's a copy of Orbit DVD if you want to buy mine. <laughs> the Pipe Pot- 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 Strangler. <laughs> the Pipe Strangler versus the Louisville Lover versus the Clove Hitch Killer <laughs> in a steel cage match. Electrified. <laughs> Welcome to Mercy from 2018 is also what? released on March the 5th. There you go. Look at that cover. <laughs> that That is just bad. That's stellar. Yeah, I don't think I've I don't think I've seen this one yet. Yeah, I haven't seen this is a nun flick. I think I haven't seen this one yet. Well, well Steve might know about that one if it's a nun movie. We should Steve's ask him. Steve's got a poster of that in his room. <laughs> Nuns don't want none. No. Nope. Hopefully that poster. That's shit right there. That's <laughs> the just, poster he's got. Yeah, I could all let's just blacken it all in. I, I could make that watch like tonight. I could draw that cover on my iPad, boys. That's pretty bad. <laughs> that yeah. Um March the 12th, collector's edition of The Craft with the legendary Robin Tunney and Feruza Bulk. Robin Tunney, Gene Tunney's baby girl. Jack Tunney's I, granddaughter. I always love this Jack artwork. Tunney's granddaughter. Yeah. yeah. To me, the, the original artwork is iconic. Like, they should have just... I know that Screen Factory don't do that often, but that should have been the original artwork there. Well, they did that for the 4K. Yeah, so... 
You know, yeah. I think better than that movie is the remake of that movie. God, that was great with David Duchovny. They did a remake of it. Yeah. I didn't even remember. I didn't even remember that they did oh, a remake. Oh, that's like my top ten of the last ten years. I like the craft a lot, though. It's been a quite a while since I've seen it, but yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of that. What year? That was like ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. Had to, but it was around Scream because uh, Nev Campbell was kind of hot at that point. This is another interesting one too. This one frequented video stores in the mid nineties. Man's best friend from 1993 genetically mutated Rottweiler or something, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love all these. I actually really like that. Yeah, Yeah. it's fun. Like I remember it being a fun movie. Isn't it Jennifer Jason Lee in that as well? No, it's Ali Sheedy. So he did the, oh. um, the, the disc art on a damn Microsoft power paint or something. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is a shitty uh, artwork. It's terrible, sure. man. So yeah, it's, yeah, I thought it was, uh, it's Ali Sheedy, not Jennifer Jason Lee. Those two, I get mixed up. But uh, Lance Henriksen as well. So that's a pretty fun one. That's kind of surprising that they'd give that one a standard release. Still yeah. going all out for it. They had a lot of those kind of movies back then, though, um, around that time, like those killer dog movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. The Witches from 1966 was released the next week, March the 19th, 2019. Uh, Joan Fontaine, boy, that's one of Uncle Bill's favorites. Love Joan Fontaine. Yep. And The Deadly Mantis from 1957. No, the giant Mantis movie, same day. That definitely sounds like somebody had been in the Dungeon uh, of Doom. I mean, it's pretty much a double cricket. <laughs> deadly <laughs> Mantis. It's the Deadly Mantis. Coming down the aisle with the master. It's the Deadly Mantis. He'd be like <laughs> doing some sort of gimmick. Because the other guy in this. They should have brought <laughs> like El Gigante back again as the Deadly Mantis. He was supposed to be the killer. Yeti, but he went home. How March the 26, 2019. The Body Snatcher. From 1945, I get. Was that the original Body Snatcher? Uh, no, I don't think. Well, maybe, but not Invasion. I don't know. I don't have that one. What year did the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers come out? I don't know. This yeah. is pretty early. This is 1945 with Boris Karloff. Uh, yeah, it's it's gone. it's gone. Oh come on, baby! You didn't keep that. <laughs> it should be the Body Snatcher. I think I actually own that. I think that's one of the little... Did they send us stuff? No, they wouldn't have sent us stuff around this time. No, we weren't even doing anything around this time. Why do I own that movie, but I do? What, Body Snatcher? Did somebody throw it at you just randomly somewhere? (laughs) Maybe they threw it out the window and it hit me and I picked it up. I don't know. (laughs) Oh, that's the Body Snatcher. (laughs) Yeah. Um, 3-26-19... Warning sign from 1985. Kathleen Quinn. But I I'm couldn't find it on my shelf. I don't know. It's a good movie though. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's one of my most underrated films, in my opinion. Like that movie came out way before like stuff, you know, like Outbreak or Contagion or things like that. But it had a similar theme and it's a great movie. Yeah, Sam Waterston, Kathleen Quinlan. Um they all this yep, yep it, yep, yep it, Koto. There you go. Yep a pie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah, I love that movie. What is that... the uh, what's the spine look like on the regular side of it? Because I, I, I know I have it, but for some reason I couldn't, I didn't find it. Oh, it just isn't red. Okay, black and red. Yeah. Warning sign. Yeah, it's black and red on both sides, Garrett. All right, Kathleen Quinlan mm. from nineteen eighty five. That's a good year. Yeah. The next week. April the 4th, 2019. Pledge from 2018, IFC Midnight. Oh, shit. This is not good. It ain't good. good. No good. No good. No. Very slow. Not a lot happens, and it's very forgettable. The acting is just pure ass. It's it's pretty bad. (laughs) Well, I got to say, that cover didn't do much for me. Neither one of those covers. Neither side is is worth a damn. But. Pledge. (laughs) <laughs> is that like the spray they should have had yeah they should have had like a similar artwork is actually the, yeah. the pledge can so, spray I you, get in, you get in none get out fabulous i want, I want some lime scented pledge baby on blu-ray <laughs> here's another one the same day 
Russ Creek. Rust Creek. This ain't a bad movie, man. Pretty good. Pretty good. Rust Creek. What's that one about? <laughs> Rust. And In the creek. creek. <laughs> you got a girl that breaks down. Let me make sure I ain't talking out of my ass here. I know, I know I've seen this one. And the girl this breaks down. One. Basically, she's going to college or something. And she has a basically, basically it's a hillbilly killer movie. Is what it so is. it's she like, is it a Wolf Creek kind of cash her. in? It's got to be. This guy tries to help her and she goes to the guy's house. And there's, and he's kind of like the low rung of the fucking totem pole. And some of his buddies are coming in trying to, you know, get him to do shit. He's mm-hmm. trying to protect her and save her from the, from his bosses, basically. Everybody talking out of my ass. I know I've seen this. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Y'all correct me down below if I'm wrong. But Ooh. I remember being good. I ain't seen it in a couple of years. Yeah, so we're right at halfway through. I think we're doing pretty good on the time. We appreciate everybody hanging in there. <laughs> halfway through. I don't <laughs> kill your ass. I, 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 don't, I feel don't, like you've been a hundred times already. Dude, let me tell you something now. I want to be honest with you because Pop helped me with this list. I don't think I would have been able to do it at all because I had the dates and the titles on here and stuff. But yeah, I mean, this is just half. This right here. Yeah, it's Hold ridiculous. On. Now, do you guys have, Wes, do you have any of these titles? Uh, the collector's editions, yes. I think I may have Saturday the 14th, hmm. but most of these other ones, no. Um, I have a lot of the collector's edition ones. Um, What about you? You got most of these? Me? Uh, yeah. I, got, I, I still got quite a bit left, but again, I don't, I don't feel like I have half of what of what we just talked about. So there's probably a lot I still don't have. I still have quite a bit here. Jesse Moore, buddy, bingo. You win the prize. We're from Appalachia and Eastern hey, Kentucky. They pan the mountains of <laughs> Eastern Kentucky. The holler. I would love to walk around your little town there and see how different it is than where I am here. Intrigues you me. Could... Is, it, is it a lot different than the documentary or is it still not too far? changed since then <laughs> no it's about the same that is so funny man that is awesome see like i, I do remember like, it seems it feels very slow paced i feel like where i am it's like everything's 100 miles an hour all the time yes and that's yes um there was a story that kelly told me i don't know if it's true or if he was exaggerating but like he said that uh when he was doing the documentary he went into this local like little family restaurant and sat down and like him and jim but by the way who was like what six foot seven Six foot eight, something Tattoos like that. all over his arms. Yeah. And, stuff. and they said like everybody was like, everything stopped when they walked in and like everybody was staring at him like a fucking movie. Where it was just you like, boys ain't from around yeah. here. So <laughs> I don't know. That may be an exaggeration. He may have been paranoid, but it could also be the truth. I wouldn't do good in Kentucky. Is that what you're saying? In your, no, in your no, park? not unless you're all six right. foot eight with tattoos on you. I don't think you are. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, but we appreciate everybody hanging in there with us. We have over uh, 218 people checking us out live. So, wow. again, uh, big thanks to you guys and thumbs the the stream up and everything. And share it with your friends, family, and neighbors and coworkers and just whoever. We don't care if they're into horror movies or not. Just tell them about it. Where would I, where would I stop at here, boys? The uh, Rust oh, Creek. We were on Rust Creek. Yep. Four on uh, April the 9th, 2019, The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. Woo! No. I got it. Ah, what oh, a what? name. That's a great what name. What a name. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. The Golden Vampire. Legend. That's one of the ones when I was buying all this shit, and I, that, I had to buy that one, and it came in. I had to retake my life a little bit. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> mm. I can see that. Yeah. You yeah. see that, Tyler? You're right? like, Legend of Seven yeah. Gold. I bought it. I got it. Shelf. I paid probably too much for it. And I, actually, I think I got that one off Hamilton Books. And um, I think I actually made a little money off that one when I sold it. So that's good. I guess. O- OCP Communications is uh, saying, isn't that an Asian hammer vampire movie? Well, they were doing a lot of hammer stuff this year, so it could be. Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. That almost sounds like a Sega Genesis game or something. It does, yeah. <laughs> I would have played the shit out of that game, though, for sure. Uh, <laughs> the one of their A- fantasy titles. April the 16th. Now, this is another uh, Kentucky filmmaker here. William Gurgler from the, I think it's the late 70s. 
The Manitow. Oh, I love this movie. It's a great movie. Very odd little movie. Guy that directed uh, that from Louisville, Kentucky, by the way. Yeah. We remember the, yeah. Director uh, from, I think he passed away shortly after that. That He died in a plane crash, I think, scouting for a movie or something like that. He also Did I ever tell did, you my... Uh, oh, go ahead. My history with this movie? Mm-mm. So super weird. So uh, as a little kid, my uncle, <clears throat> the horror uncle that got me into horror... He did like a lot of uh, home videos like when I was really young. So he had gotten a video camera and he was like recording like the holidays and stuff. So then he had given the videos to us when we were probably like, I don't know, 10 years old, maybe not even eight. But in the videos, I was only like three. My brother was one or whatever. So the videos would go on. It was all these home videos. And at the end, when it ended, there was a horror movie like he must have taped over it. And it was Manitou. It was like at the end. So as soon as our home videos ended, we caught like the end of this movie. And oh god! Shit out of us as kids, and all of a sudden we're like, "What is this?" And everybody just pops on. And forever, we never knew what that was, but we knew as soon as the home videos ended, we had to like shut it off because we were so scared of like <laughs> what was to come with the Indian and stuff. And when I got older, I remember it was like online. My brother and I were talking about it, like, "Hey, let's search for that." And it was like Indian horror movie from the '80s or whatever. And Manitou came up, so I bought the DVD, and we're like, "This is it!" And like, we never knew for years and years what that movie was that was like on our the end of our home videos, which is oh, well. weird. so. Yeah. I have a special love for the Manitou. I don't have the Blu-ray. I think I've got the Anchor Bay DVD. I think they did. They did do one, yeah. But... yeah, they did. What a crazy movie that is, though. Mm-hmm. Also, though, the same date, April the sixteenth, Superstition. From 1982. I thought I had that. Too Listen, I've it. got that one. This is one that, um, that one. I had never seen. And then Dana actually did it on a um, on a stream. And like I had set him because I'd never seen it. And I liked it so much that I immediately like went out and bought it. I thought it was great. It's like a slasher ghost religious theme kind of movie that I, I really enjoyed it. Hmm. April it has 16th. some great effects stuff in it too, yeah. Yeah, I remember you bragging about that one. I don't know if I've ever seen it either. April the sixteenth, though, same day, Grave of the Vampire from nineteen seventy two. Is that another one that Pop gave up? Yeah, it didn't make the cut. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's another Hammer movie or what, but yeah, they. I think that they were a lot, like it seemed like they were in abundance this year of standard releases of like mm. older movies. Like there was just a ton of them. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, I guess it's cool. April the 30th from 1955, giant spider movie, Tarantula. Yeah. That one stays. This is a Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood's in this like at the very end. It's like the fourth thing he's ever done. Um, He's only in it for just a second. He's a, uh, like a jet fighter, fighter pilot. I like that artwork there. Yeah. Mm. So because Clemson, I had to keep this one. Tarantula. Not bad. I mean, it's okay. You know, it's a it's a 50s creature feature that, I, like I said, I didn't do. But when I seen Clint, the final shot, I said, oh, I'm keeping that one. So it's, it made the cut. Sweet. So, yeah, 1955, that would have been early, Clint Eastwood. Yeah, it's like the yeah. fourth thing he's done. Mm. He's in it for about a minute. Also, that date, April the 30th, The Brain from 1988. Garrett's Good got movie, that man. one. Yeah, I sold that really one because cool. I got that one from 101 Films, the Black Label Edition. And so I got mm-hmm. rid of that one. Yeah, this is a fun one. They just did, a, I think Joe Bob just did this one as well. I remember the artwork cool. back in the day. I do too. Like, I think I that know. was the VHS artwork too, right? Yeah, it's got David Gale in it. So it's it's cool. It's definitely one to check out. And if, like I said, I think it was on his um, what one of the one of the uh, Joe Bob specials. I think it might have been the Christmas one. Maybe that was that was what he did. Saturn Video's mad. He said Tarantula is his favorite monster movie of all time. Are you kidding me? Well, <laughs> was somebody trashing Tarantula? I don't think he might was. I thought it was it was all right. Like, huh? My special effects were terrible. Obviously, it was 1955. Right. You know, but um. The movie itself wasn't bad as far as those kind of movies go. So. Yeah, I mean, that time frame with movies is a bit different, too, because they were doing a lot of, you know, matinee double features or drive-in double features, and a lot of these movies are, what, just barely over an hour or hour and 15 minutes yeah. or something? 
They fill three hours. But yeah. That'd be a fun. I'm sure somebody's done a documentary about that time, but yeah, that'd be a good one. May the 21st. Wait, we all the way. Okay. They took a break there for about three weeks. I can't believe it. Thank God. Dream Factory. <laughs> That'd be a good release then. From 1982, The Seduction starring Morgan Fairchild. Uh-huh. Look at her on the cover there. Yeah. It's a good I movie. haven't seen this yet, but I wanted to watch it, so I hung on to it. So, yeah, it's a cool movie. It doesn't get any more 80s than Morgan Fairchild, does it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a good looking lady back in the day. Oh yeah. Sure. I don't really is that a slasher movie or what is that? It's like a thriller. Thriller. It's like a thriller. I don't recognize anybody else in the movie. Michael Sarzen, Vince Edwards, and Andrew Stevens. Ooh, Andrew Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> he had to be in it. Yeah. He's contractually obligated to be in every movie she's in. <laughs> Andrew Stevens and like those, you know, uh, B-rated uh, softcore thriller type movies, like that was his that was yep. his thing. Him and Shannon Tweedy, buddy, like they were together yep. too. And like Tanya Roberts, fifty different mm-hmm. movies. Nope. May the twenty eighth, when a stranger calls back, which we took a look at that one not too awful long ago. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, that's the one with Jill Schwellen in it, right? Is that the TV? It was a TV movie. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not terrible. Um, I have the second side box set, so that's why I don't. I don't own that one. Um, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's a pretty decent uh, movie. It's not bad. It's a little bit. The second half of it's a little bit far fetched, but it is what it is. It's fun. Um, the alligator people also that same day, May the twenty eighth, yeah, nineteen fifty nine. Piece of shit. It, 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 it didn't make it. Either. Terrible artwork. I mean, the terrible. alligator people. Brother. June the 4th. I couldn't find anything about this movie, so I don't know what in the fuck it is. I'll take your dead. What the hell? Oh, <laughs> this actually is, is a pretty good movie. Um, Yeah, the, the dad is, if I remember correctly, the dad's like a, I, I, I'm going to spoil it if I tell you what he is. Um, oh, buddy, I ain't never going to watch it anyway. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> there might be there might be some people out there who want to watch this. I'll Maybe take somebody it. Wants to- Let's just say the dad's not a very good guy, and the daughter's in the pattern to step up and fuck him all up at the end. So there you go. It's, it's worth a watch. It's not bad. It's a little slow, but it picks up there at the end. But it's, it's all right. It's decent. Middle of the road. Take your dad. June the 11th. This is a collector's edition here. So, my favorite ghost rape movie of all time, The Entity. Hell yeah. From, uh, was it 1982, I think, or 81, something like that? That's a good movie. You got right? that boob squish effect with fingerprints yep. on the boob. <laughs> yeah. Prosthetic boob squish effects. There you go. That's an intense movie, man. It really is. Entity. That sound, man, when shit's the going music, on. The music, yeah. yeah. It's like, ten, ten, you got a good sound system. Really, it sounds pretty intense. It's heavy on ghost grape. I'll say that. Yeah. That's your uh, favorite flavor of Kool Aid, Ghost Grape. <laughs> yeah, it's the new Ghostbusters flavor, Ghost Grape. <laughs> it came out for time with this new movie. Uh, also, June the 11th, Frankenstein Created Woman, the collector's edition. Another, that's another Hammer movie. Hammer, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Hammer time. And Chris, uh, Lee was doing something, so Cushing got to jump in. If it ain't Lee, it's Cushing. One so of the basically, yep. Yeah. Those guys stayed busy for 20 years making those movies. Um, any memories on that one? I don't think I've ever seen I have, it. I haven't seen it. But. Now, this next one I'm curious about. Like, I don't know exactly which release this was. This was also on the 11th. Piranha, it says. But didn't they do a Piranha Blu-ray? I think this was the Steelbook, I believe. Yeah, this is the Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't say Steelbook, so I didn't know. Okay, so it's the Steelbook of Piranha, the remaster. I don't know why, but that's one movie over the years I never, ever had any interest in. I think I've seen it one time and just, I just don't. It's actually a pretty cool looking Steelbook, to be honest. It It is. is. I like the colors and everything. It's really cool. What's inside? You got people eat fish, fish don't eat people. (laughs) Little coil on the inside. 
little Dante. Yeah. Um, the Chosen was on June the 14th, also known as Holocaust 2000. Now, that's oh. one they've had a hard time selling, right? That one's still available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, from 1977, Kurt, Kurt yeah. Douglas Kurt is Kurt Douglas there on the back having a bad day, it looks like. <laughs> sure is, yeah. Well, he's constipated. <laughs> There's your reverse one, the other name we got, though. Holocaust 2000. <laughs> that, you, you would have bought it then at that point. I <laughs> was no, that. All, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a must purchase rock cover up there. <laughs> Holocaust, Holocaust 2000, yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> call me. And also on uh, June the 18th is the very first of the Universal Horror Collection. I don't know if anybody has these. Uh, um, I never grabbed those. Uh, Volume one has the black cat from 1934, the Raven from 1935, invisible Ray from 1936 and black Friday from 1940. I don't know. Got it. That's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> June the 18th, the monolith monsters from 1957. I've seen this movie though. I watched this. A couple of years ago, I think Eureka or one of those companies did did an individual release for this. And I shit you not, I think it's like it's like Killer Coal, like coal Excuse from a coal mine. Killer Coal. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got that here, but that's, it's normally just that's falls a new shirt. On people. Like there's <laughs> there's big mountains of coal that kill people or something like that. I think that's the story of Eastern Kentucky. Yes. <laughs> when did I kill if that's that? the same one I'm thinking of. Yes. That's the monolith monsters. The monolith Can you make a shirt monster. that says killer coal on it? Killer coal. Killer coal. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a WCW wrestler from 1993. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> it's what it's the lost coal brother. <laughs> killer coal. Very weird movie though. Um, Night of the Creeps though was Jan or was June the twenty fifth, a huge release for them. That was oh. another one that I purchased. I pre ordered that. Comes with two different slip covers. Yeah, I don't have that slip cover. So I need to get that. The Tom Atkins. Uh, I have that slip cover, Pop. Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, somewhere. Great movie. They come with a figure too, though, yeah. right? Didn't it come with the? Yeah, it came with, it came with the figure. yeah the Atkins one. That's another one that I'm sure the 4K is coming real soon. Uh, yeah, it's called the director's cut with this one. Probably like one of the best horror comedies. Which is funny because remember how long that thing was like you could not find or get that movie for the life yeah. of you? And then all of a sudden it came out and it was like excited, out all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. How excited we were when the DVD and shit came out and like mm -hmm. how crazy that was. Monster Squad and that came out. Like mm -hmm. I was huge. I mean, I was a huge fan of that. I guess the boyfriend artwork that they have on the cover. So I'm really glad that they went with that. Mm -hmm. Um, June the 25th, also the same day, Eli Ross, the green Inferno <laughs> collectors <laughs> edition. Oh God. I don't like this movie. At all. No, this is, this movie. is a bad one. We were, <laughs> yeah, we did that Eli Roth ranking or whatever. Uh, I, I had never seen this movie up until that point. And I was like, oh, what in the hell? Because this girl, <laughs> doesn't she get diarrhea while she's in the cage or something yeah, like that? Yeah, she goes one and drops, drops trail. And just yeah. Like, hey, so like, and then upon, she apologized at least. <laughs> I'm so happy she had Remember they were like getting high <laughs> off of like just do, yeah. all the smoke that was coming out of the guy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like a bunch of high cannibals running around. Like, it's bad. I would say. Munchies. That was the part. That was the plot of the movie. At the end, they get the munchies because they're high, and then they go in there and like try to eat them. That was, the... I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Carter um, says this is his worst movie. I mean, it's pretty close. Like, it's just really, really I bad. I think it might be his worst movie. Yeah, and that's saying a lot. I don't really know what he because he he loves Holocaust, and it was going to kind of be his version. It kind of went in like a really weird direction with it. So. Yeah, you're right. I, this is pretty perfect. Carter does it's a cannibal holocaust meets American Pie too. Yeah, it's really yeah, not. Though, that's basically because, his mindset going into yeah. it. I mean, it, it, Carter's right about that, but Jerry's comments decent if you like cannibal. Films. I love cannibal films, but like, I don't fucking like that movie. 
it's not a can. I don't think it's a cannibal movie. Do you think you went to the studio and he was like, "Listen, I know you don't want me to make a cannibal movie, but what if I make one that's kind of like American Pie?" And it's one like of those deals where, like, I, I think that he wanted to take it somewhere that the studio wouldn't let him. Like, what was the stu- was it Universal that did that movie or something like that? It was a big studio that did Green initially. Universal, yeah, when it, yeah. Yeah, it was Universal when it was theatrical. So yeah, it was Universal. I mean, I guess that's just the way they went with it because you know. Yeah, it's got the Blumhouse logo, logo on there, too. Yeah, it's early on. Monster on Campus, man, was also uh, June the 25th. Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Monster on Campus. No, hell no. Let's go. Silent Hill was G- July the 9th. All right, let me Collect ask you guys this. I have a question about this one. Uh, I never vibed with Silent Hill, but it seems like everybody loves this movie. And I'm like, am I missing something here? No, like I'm a part of me wants to rewatch it because I'm like I all I do is hear praise for this movie and I'm like I never really dug it and then when I bought this because I was like I'm gonna give it another chance because everybody raves about it and I was like I still don't really get it like I don't get the love for it now do you guys is anybody all four of you guys big fans of Silent I've Hill? never watched it I don't ever want to see it I, I watched watch it. it I, I watched the game not, maybe I the game I don't know but. I mean it looks nice like the visuals and stuff but I just I just don't know if it's not my kind of horror like it really doesn't it's not my style so I don't know why it just gets like people like oh it's like this one of the scariest horror movies ever and I'm like really I've just it's never not, had the desire to watch it let's see what the chat movie. has to say so maybe that's what it is because I did play the game so people said they they played the game hated it but Jesse says put that on 4k um yeah, a lot of people love it. Saturn Video, he says it's a movie that gets better every time you see it. It's one of the best uses of CG. <laughs> he might be fooling with you. I don't know. I remember there was a lot of CGI, like monsters and stuff. But yeah, I was just, I was curious because I just had this conversation with somebody like the other day because they hadn't seen it. And I, and I was like, you might like it. I said, I, I don't get it. But well, I mean, I don't think you would like it, actually. Like, knowing what I know about what you like about films, like, and having just seen it not too long ago, it's not, it's just not very, it's real heavy on like fog and atmosphere and CG that's like from that era, but it's not, it's just not a very good movie. I don't think. No, I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was just all right. Hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. Weird. Yeah. I don't know. That's what, just one of those from that time period that I've just never had the desire to ever see it. It seems like it's pretty people are kind of uh back and forth some say it's pretty good some say garbage so this island earth from 1955 was also released the same day Mm-mm. piece of trash something it probably didn't make the cut you know what I'll do? I'll do the I'll do the the classic like West comment that he gets in the thing. Like, how could you say something's trash? You never seen it. <laughs> it's like if you never seen it, it's just automatically garbage. <laughs> right. Yeah. This island earth from 1955 pays a price. <laughs> One that I am interested in checking out though is from there's a new movie called strays but this one is from 1991 it's a killer cat movie it's cool man no. i love i love this again animal attacks killer cat movie yeah Great stuff. i would be interested in checking that out but i have i've never seen it from it was released july the 16th is it as good as the uninvited though where the little like, creature parasite right. comes out of the cat i don't know, I don't uh, know what it is. it's different but i love both of them I got to say, though, man, I think like as far as years go, I think 2018 to 2019, the amount of releases, I don't think that we've had nearly th- this many before. Seems like a quite a lot because we've still got we've still got a ways to go. July the 16th, the Leopard Man. That sounds like a wrestler as well. From- <laughs> that bitch went there. Man, talking about the 50s, they, they just picked every animal. Mole Man, Leopard Man. I mean, Jesus Christ, man, give us some ideas. I know the Tiger cool. Man. I'm sure somebody did but, that. Yeah, there's you watch one, you've watched all of them. All the same shit. Uh, the next week, July the 23rd, Universal Horror Collection Volume 2. This one has Murder, Murders in the Zoo from 1933. <laughs> the Mad Doctor of Market Street from 1942. Strange case of Dr. RX from 1942. 
and the Mad Ghoul from 1943. He's not just a ghoul. Mad He's ghoul. a mad yeah. ghoul. That sounds like a camel kind of shit. Murders in yeah. the zoo. Murders in the zoo, man. That's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next, like, Hell Lord song. It's like on a yeah. comeback tour. Murders in the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> it was like mixing uh, the. Mur- uh, the murders in the Rue Morgue, the Wasp song, and then the yeah. Zoo, the Scorpion song. Mix those two together. Humanoids from the Deep Limited Edition Steel Book on July the thirtieth. Anybody have that? One? I have the Blu-ray, but what a movie that is, though. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I, I, Look at the artwork on that. It's an interesting flick. I mean, I think it's a good movie. It's just the whole premise is just insane to me. That's a great looking Steel Book. <laughs> It's another Corman movie, and that one he produced from 1980. Yep. Big Steve. Steve loves that one. Hell yeah. Also, the same day, they had, God, man, they had like five different releases on July 30th. Quarter Mass 2 from 1957, Hammer movie. Nope. Quarter Mass in the Pit from 1967, another Hammer movie. The Reptile. He is the Reptile from 1966. Is it about the guy in Mortal Kombat? It's like his another standalone <laughs> movie. Ermac <laughs> is the sequel. <laughs> it's like his backstory. It's like an origin story. Yeah. Ermac and Smoke and uh, Mac and Cheese. <laughs> Mac and Cheese. <laughs> Noob Sabat. <laughs> Noob Sabat. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> they just did anything. <laughs> lust for lust for the, lust for the vampire from 1971. Also on that date. So yeah, a lot of releases for July 30th. Sure. Moving on. <laughs> August the 13th. Vice Squad Collectors Edition, 1982. Wings Hauser joint. Oh baby. Yeah. <laughs> Or he's a pissed off pimp. <laughs> Gotta get the vice squad on. By the name of what's his name in it? Uh, he's got an interesting name in it. I think <laughs> Ramrod. <laughs> Ramrod. <laughs> <laughs> it's the evil pimp Ramrod. They <laughs> called him on. Look at that artwork there, man. That what is cool, though. Hell? Yeah, it is cool. I do think a great name for a movie would be Pissed Off Pimp. <laughs> be a great like <laughs> exploitation movie. The Pissed Off Pimp starring Rudy Ray Moore. Yeah. <laughs> In Prayer of the Roller Boys, they kept calling Corey Haim oh. Ramrod the whole time. Get out of here, Ramrod. You Ramrod. Well, they were big fans of Vice Squads. <laughs> I guess so. Um, also on the 13th, Galaxy of Terror Limited Edition Steelbook. Oh, yeah. Man, that one's really cool. I like the blue and the green. Yeah. There. And a lot of those, I got to mention, the steel books are pretty much uniform as well. So, same font and everything on the spine. I don't mind that movie. If I'm not mistaken, that's like an alien ripoff, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't mind it that much. I watched it. Is that the one right with around Austin Hagen it? Is that the one? Was it? I think it is, yeah. I get them confused. There's a bunch yeah. of them around that time. I'll look it up to make sure, but I'm pretty sure he's in that. Yeah, a lot of people in the chat putting over Vice Squad. Justice Smith says he's on Team Ramrod. <laughs> oh, God, by God. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my God. But, yeah, I mean, we yeah. still have two, 215 people checking this out live. So, again, we appreciate everybody sticking there with us. A lot of movies. we still got a few left. 95 total releases for the year, you know, the fall of 2018 to the fall of 2019. So thumbs up the stream again. Pretend you're Hacksaw Jim Duggan and just, oh, tough guy. <laughs> and like it, share it with your friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, you know, even uh, distant relatives. Tell them all about it. Forbidden World, the still book. It's also not a bad one. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I've seen nice, that one. Nice though. slip too. I mean, uh, a nice steel book. Yeah. 
are all those steel books some of those are not that common though right i don't think i've seen the last couple at all before i, I haven't seen this one yet. any of those are uh collector's items still welcome to the garden of eden and we play god here <laughs> hail lord had the garden of eden song back in the day you remember that uncle bill of course i do yeah you got to squeeze on the melons as you bow down to the hell. Yeah, it looks like somebody wiped their ass with my jack card. You know, Brief let bitches. <laughs> let it no good. August the 20th, 2019. The Horror of Frankenstein. Another Hammer horror movie from 19. How many times did they name something the Horror of something? Yeah, I know. Yeah. The Horror of Frankenstein. The Horror of Dracula. The Horror of the. Frankenstein's bloody Peter. <laughs> Fear in the Night, another 1972 uh, Hammer horror movie. Also, it was August the 27th. Leech Woman from 1960. No, God. <laughs> that's a killer figure though from Full Moon. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the that's the backstory of Le Leech Woman. It's a standalone <laughs> yeah, movie. It's a universal movie there. <laughs> August the thirtieth, <30th, laughs> I trap the devil. Another IFC Midnight movie oh. from uh, twenty nineteen. Ooh, both I have it. I trap the devil. Yeah. Thoughts on it's I trap the devil? Real, real <laughs> slow burn. Big, big slow burn movie. It's um, I don't remember right. it. Ah, oh, trip the demo. Not a bad movie. This is real slow. <laughs> oh man! Um, Frankenstein is leaky. No, <laughs> that's about fucking kill. That would be a good one. <laughs> the the horror of the horrors. Uh, horror these are all like uh, these are all Hellard songs in the new comeback <laughs> album. <laughs> yeah, the reunion record. <laughs> Um, on September the 3rd, it's a Killer Cat Stevens song, but this is the movie, The Wind. She's like the wind. The wind, Demons of the Prairie. Oh, Ooh, it's, like it's a, the sequel. Like a, thanks for the happening. There's just a totally different thing. I, I have watched this. I'll say the trailer for it, but I haven't watched it. Yet. Pretty cool. Oh, the the coming in. There's Demons of the Prairie oh. in the wind. Ah. <laughs> I, it's I, like I, a Dio song for sure. Yeah. That's all you get on the inside. Look, of look at that wind. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. wind. So it makes the happening part two. I'm terrified of the wind. <laughs> Demons of the prairie. Scars of Dracula, September the 10th. Another hammer horror movie. Big surprise with Christopher Lee, 1970. Yeah, you're going to get Lear Cushing in every damn one of them. Scars of the Scars of Dracula. Uh, <laughs> the same day, September the tenth, Circus of Horrors from nineteen Horrors, not Circus of Horrors. <laughs> that'd be a good although that'd be a good movie. Yeah. Circus right. of Horrors would be a much better movie. Circus yeah. of Horrors, I'd rather say, but this is from nineteen sixty. Circus of Horrors. Horrors. Don't got it. September the tenth, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, baby, from nineteen. <laughs> Hammer that one. It's hammer. Hammer time. <laughs> from the bloody tomb. The blood from the mummy's tomb. <laughs> September the 17th, straight on till the morning. That sounds like the beginning of a Dio song. <laughs> it does. <laughs> like Saxon. Straight on till the morning. Don't In the it. misty wind. Nobody has that one. September the twenty. <laughs> as, the, as the years as the years go on, it's like we're getting less and less here. Yeah. How yeah. strong it started? It started real strong. Well, I'll just add this up though here. Okay, so ninety five releases. If you were to just pay twenty dollars a piece, which you know you're not going to be paying <laughs> that, how much money is that? That's a lot of money. More than I'm going to pay for this shit. <laughs> And when the Six. guy asks, can I get a refund of my vinegar syndrome? Right. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> and they're like, you're stupid. 
<laughs> you big dumbass. Did you hear what they was going to have? Before? Somebody posted on the Vinegar Syndrome site. They wanted, a, they wanted to see if they could get a partial refund on their subscription. They don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad life choice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even, I didn't even read the comments, but I know what the comments are on that. I oh, he got destroyed. By <laughs> you big dummy. Yeah. You didn't like Navy Seal, stupid. <laughs> I can just hear him now. Navy Seal is that's not even like included in that anyways. Anyways. That's like an extra fee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> John Carpenter's Vampire's Bulls was released collector's edition September the 24th, 2019. Underrated. Yeah, that's yeah, one that nobody well. references that movie at all. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, I'm a big fan of this movie. It's got Terry uh, Silver in it from Karate Kid. He is. I remember. Yeah, I remember he's in it. It's the lead <laughs> vampire, I think. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it's a pretty yeah. solid edition. Um, they were really over the years, Scream Factor has released almost all of John Carpenter's movies. Pretty aside much. From yeah. a select it's, couple, I think. I think when James Woods in a vampire movie, man, signed me up. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Christine was one of the only ones that they didn't do. Yeah. And Ghosts of Mars. Like, I figured for oh, sure yeah, they yeah, would have yeah. done that. Yeah. You know. They will soon. Right. September, September 24th, Fright from 1971. Any memories of Fright? I like that movie. I like her. Oh, man. Susan George. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Big Susan George guy. And same day, Fear No Evil from 1981. This was awesome. Uh, Take my hand. Yeah, yeah, you will fail. No. Great music in this one, too. Frank LaLogia, this was his debut movie. He would later go on to do Lady in White as well, which is another underrated one, I think. Yeah, this but is yeah, a really cool movie. This one was like highly touted, I think. Did he do anything in between those movies, I wonder? I don't know. Um, October the 1st, 2019. It's a bitty, baby. It's a bitty. <laughs> no, that movie's garbage, dude. <laughs> Is that <laughs> the, the, what was the what was the how did the song run? Was it like a hand thing? Like you do yeah. the if the be a spider, spider. spider. Yeah. Oh, God. goes up the water spout, if you will. Imagine that's in the movie, it's like going up the spout. <laughs> Could you imagine Dusty Rhodes just singing that song <laughs> with the hands up? To Cody, back in the day. Down came the rain, baby, and washed the spot out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you climbed the cage like an itty bitty. The itty bitty spider. <laughs> So the last, this is it. This is the final release. Ain't no way. Of year seven, boys. The oh. never ending year. Look around. It is <laughs> the Omen Collection. Look there, I got it back there, boys. That was my showcase. The oh, Deluxe yeah. Edition. Baby, y'all. That has Ooh. all of the Omen movies up till this point. The first Omen God is getting to come out. Box set anymore. So it's not yeah. an official set, yeah. Anymore. You like part four the best, don't you? I like part or four. Three, three, three you like. No, part three's got Sam Neill in. He can go to hell, literally. <laughs> he did in Event Horizon. You don't like that one either. The, um, I like all of the Omen movies, though. Like up to the, I don't like the remake. It's pretty bad. But even the fourth one, like it's, it's not good, but it's entertainingly Dusty is the green. Oh, oh Lord. Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty specific. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that. And Dusty is the guy in the book on CD of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't make love, baby. I think. <laughs> <laughs> So that is year seven, Scream Factory. Holy crap, man. Jesus Christ. So we're like almost up. We're in the fall of 2019. And then the next the next year will be 2019, 2020. I think they really start slowing down in 2020 yeah. because of COVID and everything. I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff 
being released and, and they needed to because this this year is staggering how many freaking titles came out yeah 95 and everybody's got their own taste but most of the most yeah. of the movies this year is wasn't, wasn't my style me well, neither I think like going from year to year this one seems like it may be the weakest as far as stuff that just I'm into like I don't know maybe some Do of they- these movies they don't People really do. do that anymore either with like the 50s movies, do they? Not as they, much. Um, not as much as they were doing, but I think this year is where they were hot and heavy with it. They were coming out. Yeah, they ran years. out of them after this year. Yeah. And they they released they them all. I got to imagine all that stuff is cheap as hell, though, man, to get the rights to those movies. Like, they could probably get all that stuff. I'm sure it was a bulk oh. deal, like a lot of the Hammer stuff, and mm-hmm. a lot of it was Universal. So they probably got like a big deal for a bunch of movies and just was like, yeah, we'll just release them. All. I wouldn't mind if they did or, or somebody did like a hammer box set. Because again, it's one of those, like, like Wes said, I'm not familiar with. I'd love to go back and just get them all. I kind of wish I didn't pass up on them, but um, yeah, that that's was the bulk of, of these titles. I think was a lot of them were the hammer stuff. Uh, DC, we are actually, we do it every year from October to October. Um, is how we've been doing it. Uh, just because the, I think the first couple of years were kind of like, I, I think, think that, it's the first of, year started in October, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 First year started in October. That's right. So that's how we've always right. done it. So maybe, I mean, we may bring year eight towards the end of this year. We took like a whole year off because we're pretty close to catching up to like, you know, cause really, if you look at it the last couple of years, you know, they haven't really been releasing a whole lot of other stuff aside from the, you know, the 4K 4Ks, oh. yeah, the 4Ks that they're re-releasing. Um, so, but yeah, guys, hell, we, we got through 95 releases. So holy shit. And it didn't take three hours. <laughs> That's crazy, man. The amount of titles of like, I just can't believe that. Well, imagine if we talked in detail about each title. Well, there's no right. way. What can you I'm say glad about I didn't. people? I didn't know about hardly any of them or a lot of them. So, but, uh, yeah, guys. So I guess that is it. If anybody in the chat has anything, of course we can, we can mention it on here. Garrett, what do you got coming up on uh, born to be rad? Uh, I may have a real cool interview this week. It looks like Wednesday night, but I'm just going to get a confirmation on that. Um, I filmed my, uh, my movie library room tour. So that'll be out next weekend. Mm -hmm. So be ready for that. Um, and those are the two big ones. And then everything else is just going to kind of be trickled in uh, if I get stuff to review or whatnot. So, uh, just keep your eye on the channel. I'll probably go live at some point this week on top of that. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes on it. Yeah. Stay tuned. Born to be rad.com there. And, uh, pop, what you got coming up, man? I'm going to be on Dell on movies channel on the 15th, whatever. He has a series called movie swap where we basically recommend the movie to each other. We watch it, get on there and talk about it. And um, so I'm going to be on that the 15th. As far as my channel goes, the you know, same same stuff. Got some live streams, uh, collection updates, top five, shit like that. So uh, that's that's about it right now. Cool. This, this was the big one right here. This is what I get nervous on. My, my, my streams get 30 views. I have 30 people watching live. You guys got over 200. So this is a little nerve wracking. That's all the good time. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, it, what's the difference, though? I mean, you can't see any of these right, people. It's, it's different if you're just like... Once I get on her, it's fine. It's the lead up to it. Right. You know, right. Once I get on her, it's fine. But like I said, my, my, my live streams are a lot of fun. That's the same group of guys, and it's about 40 people, you know? So this is um this is always fun. I appreciate yeah, you guys these, on. No, it's... We, we always enjoy having you on. And yeah, like I said, there's probably a bunch on here that haven't seen some of the original... Like we've been doing this since the beginning, not like going through in detail, yeah. like all of Screen Factory's releases starting probably Garrett. I think it was just you and I that started it probably three mm-hmm. years ago, four years ago. I think it was the beginning of 2021 or roughly around that time, I think. So yeah, it's kind of, I mean, we're, you can go back and check out all the other videos and everything. So like some of the early few years were very exciting and then we get to like a year like this where they're kind of running out of stuff to release and then as the year like as the years go on past this even more so but i mean we'll get to that here coming up but maybe we'll try to do one before the end of the year do a year eight 
But uh, Uncle Bill, what do you got coming up, buddy? I got shit coming up. Except tomorrow, oh. um, doing the vinegar syndrome drop, I guess. Yeah, if you can. <clears> if April you can, titles. Uh, yeah, everybody's going to be so excited about that. They just can't hide it because who knows what vinegar syndrome is going to. Nothing good, I'm betting. Uh, people are going to be requesting more refunds of their subscriptions. <laughs> no, get that out of here. But um, there's that. And then I don't know. So are we doing something on WrestleMania? Like, yeah. Ne- yeah. So next weekend, I, then, huh? Yeah. So I was thinking, like, I don't know when the next Exploitation show is going to be. That's going to be. Well, WrestleMania will be uh, two post shows. So WrestleMania Saturday and WrestleMania Sunday. I think we're going to try to do both. If we can, so yeah, everybody's excited about that too. So lots of other stuff planned as well. Just stay tuned and subscribe to all the channels and everything. And I will, uh, you know, born to be rad dot com, born to be rad, uh, ops movie, yeah, born to be rad on Instagram and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, all that shit. Yeah, Pops Movie Dungeon, and uh, we appreciate everybody staying with us. Still have over 200 people in here, so that's always fun, and we will do more of these. I think we're probably going to do another Arrow video one coming up. I think Mark is going to help us with that one. Um, So, yeah, these are always fun to do, man, for sure. And uh, cool. Appreciate it, Chris. Donation, yeah, they'll oh, do yeah. something like April that. Fools. We were talking about that, yeah, yeah, April Fools and all that stuff. So, all right, guys, but I guess that is it. It's a work night, so uh, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in and everything. And stay tuned to Pops Movie Dungeon, Born to Be Rad, and of course, deadbit.com. Give us the thumbs up, Off you like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Poor dog, I really don't give a fuck. No I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, I need to do that. No, don't you dare do it. Thumbs up. Click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on. In addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.